So welcome to the webinar of Kessler and Qualities. So I think it's time to start. Um, my name is Katarina Bichli. I'm responsible for the business field um, of biomechanics within the Kessler Group. And with me um, are the following presenters. So we have um, Johannes Werker and Katarina Hellman from the Qualities team. Um, um online and then they are from the support team and then we have Dominic Kenny product manager from Kistler. We are the host of the two days webinar. Maybe some general information to start with. Please note that the webinar is going to be recorded so you are all muted and um, but in case you have questions you can leave that in the area on the Q&A area on the right in the web webinar tool and we might read out some questions loud at the end. So this will be recorded as well, so just for, inf for your information. But you can leave your questions during the whole webinar and we will answer them during the webinar. And if we don't have enough time, we will follow up afterwards via email. What is the content of today's webinar? So I will start with some insights into the technology of Kistler, then a short overview of the force plates used um, from Kistler, and then I will pass on to the main part. So it's the qualities part, um, the technology, and then mainly their software, the QTM software, um, where is the focus how to integrate Kistler force plates into the QTM software, including a lifetime demo. And at the end, you have the chance to put your questions to experts from both companies. So let's start with the part about Kistler. Um, and let's start with the technology first. So Kistler force plates are all equipped with small and extremely rigid piezoelectric force sensors, which have a clear advantage when it's about measuring dynamic forces, which are quite typical in biomechanics. I will focus on three main points, the high natural frequency in all three directions, the dynamic impulse response and the wide measurement range. So why is a high natural frequency so important? In human movements and biomechanical tests, the force increases quite often at the high rate. Um, and thanks to a high natural frequency, um, force, um, peak forces and rate of force development can be measured more reliable. So on the right, you can see a graphic um, comparing two different um, force plate is different natural frequency. And you can see um, the overstatement of the signal is different. So the higher the natural frequency, the, the lower um, the overstatement is. An example here at an activity of 100 Hertz. But the high natural frequency has also a beneficial effect on measurements with a lower frequency content. As a greater difference between the natural frequency of the force plate and the frequency content of the signal, reduces the overstatement as well, and so also the error. Um, so what kind of natural frequency should I choose for my force plate? So it's recommended to use a force plate with a natural frequency that is five to 10 times greater than the largest frequency component of the signal. That means when we look at gate analysis, it's frequency up to 50 Hertz, or more dynamic tests such as sprint, um, frequencies might be up to 100 Hertz. So um, with Kistler force plates, which have natural frequency of up to 1000 Hertz in all three directions, vertical and horizontal, you can cover nearly all biomechanical applications. So we are coming to the next point. Why is the impulse response of the force plate so important? So when we have abrupt changes in force, a high dampening factor plays a key part in order to re record events directly followed by another action. So as an example, when you are sprinting, you lift, you place the foot on the ground and then you lift it during the sprint. It can be measured far more accurately with force plates and based on peer technology and as such with a high dampening factor, as you can see also on the right, where it is shown that when an event within the first um, um, 0 0.05 seconds happens again, and um, you have a less, a reduced error because of a lower ringing response of the force plate. Um, 
And last but not least, um, the wide measurement range. Um, it is important to know that in piezoelectric sensors, sensitivity and resolution are independent of the sensor itself, the measurement range and the size of the sensor. As such, um, you can measure with the same force plate if it's installed perfectly and the heartbeat and as well a dynamic movement like a counter movement jump. Um, with, with strain gauges, you are more bound to a specific measurement range and exceeding this range it usually results in damage to the structure of the strain gauge sensor. Whereas in the force plates, with better technology, you cannot really destroy the sensor, but you can probably destroy the mechanical parts of the force plate first. So that's a big difference here. Yeah, that was the technical part. So I let's give you a short overview about the Kistler portfolio. Um, so we have and different force plates for permanent installations, the first two on the right, and we have different portable force plates. The main applications are within research, sport and clinics, and all products are actually also listed in our brochure, which you can download from our website. The main products shown on the right can are available in different sizes, and you will also notice the measurement range is different from the fixed installed force plate, the two gray ones, the first ones compared to the portable ones, the blue one, for example. That's not due to the sensor or the technology used. It's really because we have we made them as light and portable as possible. So you could damage the mechanical part, the top plates of the force plates. But nevertheless, we still have a quite high natural frequency taking into account that it's just standing and not fixed installed in the ground. There are some more specific force plates like a waterproof force plate or a force plate with transparent cover where you can do videos from below, which is quite often used in industry, especially shoe industry, but also research. Also there, there are different sizes available and we can also customize sizes if needed. Yeah, and then we have some specific um, applications like the hand force measuring system, which is used for workplace safety and ergonomics, but also instrumented sport equipment, like for example, a pole wall planting box, but also others like a sprinting star block. I will show you some more information right afterwards. Yeah, um, for the current force plates, we have an analog output, which is then connected to our data acquisition box shown here. And there are two type of boxes, but for the quality system, it's important that we use the one on the right, and you will see later on how the integration is working. I'm also happy to share with you a little bit of a glimpse into the future, what's coming in 2021. Um, so there will be a new digital measurement chain based on new digital force plates. Um, the main advantage will be that we will not have an extra duck box, data acquisition box anymore, and all the force plates can be daisy chained. Um, this means that you can daisy chain up to 16 force plates, and if you want to have more force plates synchronized, you can even connect them via PTP switches. So there is theoretically an unlimited amount of force plate which can be synchronized. Synchronization happens over, over um, the PTP um, protocol, it's a precision time protocol, which isn't quite an industri industrial standard um, nowadays, and synchronization happens within microseconds. Also, an advantage is that cables are not limited anymore to a certain um, distance, so you can have cables of up to 100 meter without loss of any signal. Um, important for you when you have existing Kistler force plates in your lab, you can have an upgrade package available. Um, and in case you have projects in 2020, we can offer you as well a package, including an upgrade in 2021 that you can start measuring right now, but upgrade to the newest technology later on in 2021 when it's available. So to finish um, um, the presentation, I just want to give you a quick look into the Kistler systems, which are combining hardware and software for data analysis. And um, first of all, we have the so-called key jump or quarter jump systems. And as the name says, you can do jump tests and many other tests to analyze the performance of an athlete by measuring force data. So it's one to two force plates. And the main application is 
in strength and conditioning and for performance diagnostics to look and to plan your training, return to play and so on. It's provided with a so-called MARSH software. Then there is the key sprint system. As the name says, it's um, for a sprint start analysis. Um, it's combining uh, instrument the starting block, by the way, certified by the International Federation as well, um, with video for an optical feedback and with a laser to measure velocity as well, up to 30 meters. Of course, this starting block can be also used with the quality system and the QTM software. So it can be integrated over the same DRQ box like a normal force plate. The same is for the key sims, swim systems. We have an instrument and starting block as well, but also a turning wall. They are like force plates, so we can integrate them into the quality system. But there is also a standalone software to do performance analyst analysis on a more daily basis including five cameras, um, which are measuring also in a calibrated room, the velocity of the start and turn performance. Here are some nice pictures from a site in Switzerland. Yeah, and to finish, um, as you know, Kisser is present worldwide and we have a so-called center concept that we can be close to the customers. Your first contact is normally the sales centers, um, which give you advice or will administer the whole sales process. Um, in case you need services like calibration, repair or training or installation, there is a tech center um, available in quite many countries. And all is supported by the competence center, which is for biomechanics based in Switzerland. Um, and where we are sitting, it's the product management and engineering and the whole development research and research. Also to mention that all force plates are produced also in Switzerland. So the production center is also close by and we have short ways to communicate there. And to finish um, some examples about installations where you see the different options to customize things like the surfaces, the flooring. You can even have a flooring which you can exchange later on if needed, or you can adapt sizes or a top plate for heavy animals or even for really small animals um, where you need smaller force plates. So these are all kind of customizations possible um, within Kistler services. Yeah, that's it from the Kistler part. Um, I want to thank you already for the attention now. For more information, you can visit our web page or contact me or Dominic directly. So I will pass now on the word to Qualysys that they can continue their, their part. Okay, thank you very much, Katarina, um, for the presentation of uh, the Kistler force plates and the advantages of PISA technology. We will have a very short break to change the presenters roles from Kistler to Qualysys and we'll then continue right away. We thank you for your patience. And now I will change presenter mode. Johannes Zwerker from Qualysys should now be able to, to share his screen and present. You have to unmute yourself, Johannes, and then you can start. Yeah, sorry about that. I didn't <laughs> now I'm uh, unmuted. Yeah, hi, my name is Johannes. We're presenting this Kistler integration from our office in Sweden. And with me is Katarina, who will answer some questions. Um, so, Uh, just to start, we Qualysys have a lot of work in a different applications. So everything from human biomechanics to sports, entertainment, engineering and animal biomechanics. For this presentation, we will, because of its uh, topic of Kistler integration, we will mostly focus on the human biomechanics part. So. Uh, the life sciences and the human biomechanics. There we have um, both the movement research gate mainly and uh, different sports research that we work with. 
And the qualysis also have a qualysis clinical system for the gait analysis, where um, a subset of the quality system is uh, certified for the European class 1M or also cleared by the FDA for clinical use. So this uh, can then be used for in a hospital uh, setting where you measure on uh, patients for a clinical uh, evaluation. And just short about our current technology. As some of you may have seen, we have just uh, released a new camera, the Arcus, uh, which has a resolution from 5 to 26 megapixel. Uh, we st still have our smaller camera, the Micus camera, and uh, also a Micus video for a synced uh, video. Um, there's also a special option of, for the Micus camera, which is a hybrid which has uh, both uh, marker and video capabilities, so you can switch between them, and that's mainly for the new upcoming markerless features that are. So, and all of these cameras, they can be used together in a the system. There, you can mix them um, as, as you like. So, for the Kistler integration then, it's a digital integration with a Kistler DAC. So uh, all of the data is frame synchronized. And you get the analog raw data in QTM as well. Uh, as you can see here, uh, you can display the forces in the 3D and of course then export to other software such as uh, Visual 3D and MATLAB. It's also possible to uh, use other equipment together with the quality system, such as EMG and eye tracker. And you can see a list here of different EMG and eye trackers that we support. So, and just to, to mention then for uh, different applications in the life sciences, we have something called analysis modules. Uh, this is a way to organize your capture and report. It's not a requirement to have them. You can use our program by itself, but this makes things easier to, to organize and uh, manage your subject data. It's also an open framework, so you can actually make your own analysis module, but we have specific ones for in this list that we uh, sell for, for example, for gait and running and some different sports and also one for functional assessment and force analysis. Uh, I will later show uh, a bit from the gate uh, module and the force analysis module. So then the Kistler integration, it's actually fairly simple, the hardware wise. You just uh, connect the, the box to the computer with the USB and then you need to have a, a cable to connect sync out from the camera to sync in on the Kistler system. Uh, so, and then you, uh, yeah, that's actually all that you need. So, <laughs> yeah, so now I will show a bit from QTM, our program how you set up the Kistler plate and um, how it looks in the when you run this system. So to start with, uh, you need to add the, the Kistler duck. So we've done that here. Um, and you select uh, which uh, sample rate that you want. You can use, since it's synchronized by frame, you multiply it by some sample rate. So five in this time, at this, so it's a thousand Hertz. Um, you then need to define how many plates that you are using so that this can, uh, so they know which channels to activate on the uh, Kistler DAC. So in this case, we have two different plates. And here you can set the range that is going to be used by the, the plate. And then um, after you've done that, 
you need to add the force plate just so that you can uh, calculate the force data. And to do this, we need the, the calibration information from Kistler. So this is entered from from the paper that you get with the with the force plate. So you enter the dimensions and this uh, the scaling factors that you get so that everything is calibrated. Uh, we also have the possibility to use this Kistler COP correction for different force plate models. Um, and as you can see here, the, it uses you can it selects the range from which you set before for the force plate. Once you've done that, you also need to make sure that you use uh, the correct channels for the force plate. And uh, finally, you need to have a position for the force plate. And uh, this is easy, most easily done by placing markers in the corner of the force plate and then make a short measurement. And then you will end up with these kind of values. So I've already prepared this in the before because it's yeah it's not that interesting to see. So now that we have a location for the force plate and we have all the calibration and analog channels, we will then get force data in QTM. So now if I start the live view, uh, you can now see the two force plates here. There are the, and Katerina has some markers on her two legs. And when she walks on the force plate, you can see the, the force, the arrow of the, the force that it's applied. Uh, so uh, yeah, so this data then can then be captured or streamed in real time to other programs. Um, and then we also have uh, two video cameras in this setup. In this case, we have the the black and white ones, but we have color at the moment. So you can see if I turn on 3D overlay here. Ah, I see that I he was standing on the force plate there when <laughs> something restarted. Just need to. So now if Katerina walks again, you can see you get the overlay with the force arrow and the, and the video. And the cameras are, of course, then calibrated with the rest of the system so and synchronized. So you get the position of the, of the camera in the, in the 3D world. Yeah. Uh, I think that's, thanks, Katarina. So, um, and as I mentioned before, we have uh, different modules that can be used for organizing your captures. Uh, we have the gate analysis module, uh, which is marker-based with the Visual 3D for analysis. And uh, coming in Q3, we have a markerless version of the same module, or it's actually included in the same module, uh, where we will have um, together with Thea. Uh, so this uh, gate analysis module, it supports many different marker setups that you can uh, use and for your analysis, and it includes an interactive web report so if I now switch project, <laughs> we now see how it looks in the, so this is an example of how a uh, gate project. So if we select this, uh, this session here, we will see, um, here we have some information about the person. 
and we have uh, the different measurements that have been done. So we will, when you capture, you will be told to, you have to make a static and you have to make a certain amount of dynamic files. And this then of course also includes in gate uh, force plate. And as you can see here, um, this data you can then uh, for each of these sessions, you can create your web report, which you do from here. Uh, but that's already been prepared as well. Just, um, so this is the web report. And uh, as you can see, you get a lot of uh, graphs here with the information about how you move uh for yeah lower body and upper body uh there's also emg included in the in the report uh so from this you can uh, you can get all the information that you need from a gate analysis and one important uh, feature is uh, the interactivity so you can add something that we call feature and from that, you can select different, let's say something was too early, the bilateral pelvic tilt. Um, so you can add uh, that as a comment. And you can see here that we have, it's an example here. So you add them and then you get these findings. So you can easily find what, what was uh, the thing that was important in this measurement. Ah, yeah. And uh, yeah, my colleague mentioned that you can actually connect them, uh, like here, I think, leg length difference, so that you can uh, tell that, I mean, this these two things are actually an effect of one, uh, one problem for the person. And you also have uh, the skeleton moving here. If I click play, you can see that you get the... Uh, 3d world here to the right together with uh, the video that was recorded yeah so that was a really quick walkthrough of the analysis module for gate uh, i won't go into any details but of course if you have questions about anything just write them and um uh, write them and we will answer them uh, either later in the in this uh, webinar or afterwards. So another type of analysis module that we have is uh, the force analysis module, and this is actually very similar to the the key jump that Katerina mentioned before. It's uh, video based. Uh, can, sorry. So, uh, just short, it's a simple force based, I mean, analysis with the video. And you can do uh, this counter movement jump, drop jump, and uh, a very simple gate analysis from it. And you get a word report. So, this can be seen like a start kit for the quality system um, because you can you can use the video cameras later in with your if you buy a marker uh, based camera system later or markerless in that case you can also use them so it is the simplest uh, quality system that you can have and it uh, uses the same type of uh, setup as a gate analysis module uh, and you have, I open one of those and see you have the force plates. And in this case, since it's only video, it's just uh, force data in the 3D world, but you can then see the actual video in, um, in the 2D. And there you can 
turn on the, uh, the overlay so you, you see the force arrows together with the, with the video. And uh, these uh, measurements can then be presented in a Word report, which I thought I had there. Sorry. So uh, the Word report is uh, simpler than the, um, the web report, but it still includes a lot of information about the different measurements. So we get a report for the counter movement and some graphs about the forces and uh, velocities. And you also get the uh, automatic export of the uh, images from at certain points, uh, interest points. And these are calculated then from the force data. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, it's a, a simple way to do a, do this kind of measurement. And uh, I would just like to show if you have sorry. find information about if you have questions later after this webinar it's we have a lot of uh, we've done a lot of uh, webinars the last weeks depending on the situation in the world uh, so you can look at those for free and there's also some we have the something we call q academy with video tutorials and uh, there are some of those that are also for free that you can look at to find information Yeah, so I think that was actually everything from uh, from me as well. So thanks for your attention and um, uh, see if Katerina has something more or else we go to uh, Q&A. Thank you very much, um, Johannes and Katerina for from Qualysys for these valuable insights into the motion uh, capture technology from Qualysys, including uh, QTM, your uh, very user-friendly uh, mocap software. It was a very nice um, demonstration about how Kistler force plates um, are integrated into QTM. So um, I would say that we continue with the question and answer. Um, we have a couples of uh, minutes left so let's see what um what a first question was um for for the kistler side so the question was um if i find it let's see can can you use a kistler um 56 90a um 91a duck to integrate force plate with a qtm and the answer is no, unfortunately not. We have two DAC systems for biomechanics, a 16 channel DAC, which is the 5691A and the 64 channel DAC, which is the 5695B. And the 5695B supports sync in out. The 5691A has no sync in out. And Qualysys must control the system via a digital input output um, control port. Then um, we have another question, um, which is for the Qualysys um, people. The question is, how does the initial position of the markers in each corner affect the COP accuracy? How accurate should the user be regarding this? Maybe Katarina or Johannes can give a short um, answer to this question. Yes, uh, as uh, as in most cases, the more accurate you are in the positioning of the force plates, the more accurate central pressure data you get. 
So if, for my sake, I put quite a lot of effort into getting that that uh, information good into the system because uh, you you want to get good data. So yeah. Thank you very much for this um, answer. Um, I'm scrolling through the questions. The next question is, um, how can you handle the simultaneous application of load to two force plates, one foot on two plates simultaneously? Can you answer this uh, question, Katarina and or Johannes? Yes, um, actually we use uh, Visual 3D for calculations of, of uh, the data uh, and Visual 3D can handle putting two, two uh, pieces of uh, uh, force together uh, if you if you walk with one foot on on the edge of two plates, uh, and and it can make the uh, like uh, combine them into one step, so that actually works. I wouldn't recommend it, but it works. Thank you very much. Then the next question is. Um, Regarding the different outputs from type two and type three force plates, um, they are currently working on analyzing motion with OpenSim captured via a Qualysis system and Kistler force plate. Unfortunately, OpenSim supports only the um, conversion. Now the question is, um, is finished. Um, do you have any comments on that, um, Katarina? Um, I... uh, yeah. I'll call, uh, uh, no, no I, I can see the continue of the question now. It's further down. Um, OpenSIM supports only the conversion from type two force plates to their to their file format. Is there a way to confirm type three to type two force plate data regarding for regarding force moments and COP? Sorry for uh, that interruption. Um, yeah, I. We don't have, I mean, we, in the quality system, we use the type of force plate that it is, uh, so to say. I mean, there are different types that you use for the C 3D format. Uh, so we don't convert them in, uh, in our software. Um, so I would have to look at if there's some other way to do it, uh, but we can uh, come back with an answer to that one. All right, thank you very much. And um, then um, we we have a question um, about the hardware um, which is used to connect the Kistler force plates and the Qualysis uh, device. Um, what is the part number and what Qualysis device does it plug into? Um, the the part number of um, the cable is it is it is a special Kistler sync trink splitter um, cable which is in the product portfolio from um, Qualysis. Um, I think if this um, if the information is still correct and it should be part number two three zero one three three, but we can also um, give that information later on via email. And if um, correct me if I'm wrong, Johannes or Katarina, um, this cable connects into the Mikus Sync unit. Um, it was it was the black box we could see in one of the slides. Is this um, correct? Can you confirm? Uh, yes, uh, that's correct. Uh, and uh, you can also you can connect the sync cable to an OCA system without having this um, sync box. But uh, yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Then uh, we have a um, question regarding the, the web report um, from Qualysis. Um, the question is if um, if this is a tool for analyzing data and if they can use the data um, in in this website or maybe in in a, in a special in another website in an own website. I, I don't know if I understand the cor question correctly, but maybe you can 
say something on that, um, Johannes? Uh, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what uh, can we. I mean, if uh, uh, when you have our system and you create, you upload your reports to the site, then only you can access them, or I mean, only that user, that uh, university company, um, and then you can use the data uh, as you want, but. Uh, there might be something specific here that <laughs> they're asking. Um, so we can follow up on that later, uh, send a, a yes. question. Yes. Okay, of course, yeah, no problem. Um, all right, I would say that we um, answer one more question and then um, we will um, answer the other questions in a follow-up email. Let me see what other question we can answer. Is there any module in the QTM software for shoulder isometrics? Um, also different types of uh, balance tests. Yeah. This is a question, yes, uh, for Qualysys? Um, yeah. There is not that I know of any specifics for shoulder movements, except for the baseball, but that's kind of different thing. Uh, so uh, I would say no. Uh, the the shoulder is included in the in the gait record, so of course, but that is also uh, quite. Uh, this small amount of data you get out from that. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any balanced uh, modules uh, as it is right now, anyway. Um, so, All right. yeah. All right, thank you very much for answering um, these questions. Um, yeah, I want to Thank all of you for, for your interest. Uh, we really appreciate that so many people registered and um, joined the webinar. And hopefully we will see each other sometime at an event or, or Congress in real life. Thank you, Johannes and Katarina from Qualysys and Kasti from Kistler Biomechanics for, for answering these questions. As we said, um, we will um, answer the remaining questions in a follow-up um, email. And there is nothing else to say for me then. Have a good day. Stay safe and healthy. Goodbye. And um, hopefully see you soon. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you for joining. Bye. Bye and thank you.